Lord, your word is truth. Sanctify us by truth. Bishop preparing, went for the confirmation service and before the confirmation, questioning the students to find uh, how much they have prepared themselves. He said, can you give me a biblical reference for each sacrament? Can you? So he started with the, the first guy who stood up and said, baptism. He said, go to all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. A biblical reference for baptism. Wonderful, Bishop said. Somebody got up and said, for First Holy Communion, he said, Jesus took the bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat all of you. A biblical reference is very good. The turn of a student came, he said, it was his turn to talk about marriage. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. You know, those days they had this video recorder. They were taking the video of all the wedding ceremony. And uh, it was their 10th wedding anniversary, so they wanted to celebrate with all the family and friends. They, they played that video uh, was played and everybody was watching. So they had a little boy, 10 year old John. Uh, the uncle asked John, John, what are your parents doing? In the wedding ceremony, they were shaking hands, they were holding hands you know, before the promise. So John explains, you know, uncle John, before boxing, they shake hands. That's what my parents are doing. In the wedding right, they were shaking hands. And now they are boxing every day. So what is happening in the family? Well, my dear friends, today's gospel is talking to us about something very important. The greatest celebration of in the liturgical calendar is this Good Friday because it is good, not ordinary Friday, it's Good Friday because God became man, God who humbled himself, and God expressed the fullest form of love and sacrifice. Today's gospel reading and all the readings put together and the whole three dome celebrations, there are six dones, six things we should not. And but then all the six things happened to Jesus. The first thing, he was rejected, not just at the cross, just even at the beginning of his ministry. He goes to his hometown, Nazareth. People labeled him. He said, we know this guy. He is a son of a carpenter. What can we expect more from him? He was rejected. And you know something very interesting? The gospel says, Jesus was not able to do anything good. Jesus went on doing good, but there he was not able to do anything good because he was stopped, he was objected, he was labeled, he was rejected by his own kith and kin. His brothers and sisters would come saying he is possessed. He has been drunk. Too much, he is doing too much. They wanted to drag him home, take him home. He is preaching in the synagogue and they were not ready to listen to him. Pharisees were waiting for every time, every moment. He was rejected constantly, constantly. Every preaching, every homilies, everything that he did, he was rejected. The second thing, he was abandoned. You know, Jesus had a, <coughs> a good team of friends. He had 72 disciples, 12 apostles, three very close to him, one close to his heart. And at the last supper, they were all there enjoying the grand meal. They had a young calf, they had uh, greens, they had wine, they had everything around the table. They had a wonderful meal. And after the meal, everybody left, ran away, abandoned. It was not once, three times. Jesus tells to them, talks to them, that he will be rejected, he will be arrested, he will be humiliated, and he will be crucified on the cross. The disciples listened to him. And at the last supper also he explains, meaning to tell, he's preparing them to be with him. In the garden of Gethsemane he prays, he says, please pray with me, please keep yourself awake and pray with me. I am in distress. And we you know what happens. Everybody sound asleep. 
I also tell people, if I preach, please sleep, no problem, I don't worry. But don't snore. If you were snoring, you'll be disturbing somebody else. All the disciples were snoring, I guess. Jesus got up and he says, can't you keep awake for an hour and pray with me? They all abandoned him. They all ran away. Such a painful... Uh, no human being can accept that. People who wear kith and kin, eating together, being together, seeing everything, and the moment of need, a moment of stress, they all ran away, abandoned Jesus. Judas betrayed him. Peter denied him. And the fifth is Jesus was humiliated. There was a number of false accusations. And one of the main accusations they made on Jesus is that he claims himself to be the son of God. According to the Mosaic law, somebody who is grading himself close to God will be stoned to death. And according to the law, Moses is supposed, sorry, not Moses, Jesus is supposed to be stoned to death. But they crucified him in just, unjust punishment he was given. Instead of to be stoned, he, they, were, they crucified him. In the last week, Bulletin tells you about a scientific research that was done by a university student, what crucifixion means, how humiliating, how painful every part of the body is drained and in pain. These are the six things that Jesus underwent on this Good Friday. What are we to do? Antidote to those don'ts. What are we to do? This is our life lesson. First thing, no shortcuts. No shortcuts. Just beginning of his ministry, he's been taught to be shortcut, to make things easy, go the easy way. The Satan comes, he says, turn these rocks, turn these stones to bread. Jump down from the cliff and you'll be taken care by the angels. Fall prostrate and God will care for you. The Satan teaches him a shortcut. And, but Jesus was not prepared for that shortcut. The disciples tell Jesus, no, 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 you don't, you need not go to Jerusalem, you did not face suffering, you need not face death. Because they were thinking of a glorified Jesus, a king, a hero, a political hero who would fight for, uh, fight against Romans. Jesus says, no shortcuts. And in our lives too, my dear friends, very many times we look for some easy way. Oh, you'll have to go for a walk for one hour, the doctor says. You'll have to do exercise. Is there any other shortcuts? Can I sit and watch television and do something or something else, easy way? Spending so much of time on internet, instead of going and talking with people, relating with people, and going out, or watching things on the television or internet, things that are not expected of a Christian. Or sometimes our behavior, our relationship, easy ways of relating with people, not taking up challenges, not taking up commitments, looking into shortcuts, breaking relationships because we don't want pain, shortcuts. There is no royal road for learning. We tell our children, our students, there is no royal road for learning. You'll have to go do hard work. When you are preparing your paper, your assignment, anything, if preparing for exams, you have to work. And that's what the message Jesus gives us today. There is no shortcuts. You'll have to face the challenges of life. The second important thing Jesus tells us today, clarify your goals, clarify your uh, your. Uh, destination our destination as Christians Jesus came to fulfill the promise that he had given to his father to bring God's reign on earth to bring God's kingdom on earth the kingdom of peace joy and justice and we are being given passed on that responsibility of establishing that God's kingdom that is our goal the goal of bringing peace joy and justice in whatever walks of our life in our family in our school in our place of work to bring that peace joy and justice and that is our goal that is our way of life 
And the third important lesson that Jesus tells us to do today is to accept the reality of life. At times we struggle with the reality of life because it doesn't go the way I want. I have a lot of fancy dreams, fantasized things, and life doesn't go that way. There are challenges and struggles, and I need to face. I need to wrestle with the reality of life. I have uh, physical ailments, uh, my shortcomings, my human weakness. These are all there to enrich us, to come on our life's journey. Jesus, on the way of the station, on the way of the cross, he fell, he got up because his focus was clear. He accepted the reality of life and he wanted to fulfill the command that uh, he has given to his father. Those of you who know the Alcoholic Anonymous would start their session with this prayer, prayer, serenity prayer. Lord, grant me the serenity to accept things that I can, the things I can change and the things I cannot, to accept things that I cannot change. And that should be the prayer that constantly we need to pray. And the fourth important message that Jesus gives us on the way of cross, he says, I am the master of my life. Not my parents, not my partner, not my husband, not my wife. I am responsible for my commitments. I take up the responsibility. I am the master of my life. I am the maker of my life. And that is what gives me energy. And focusing and keeping Jesus as my center of life and going in the way that he has showed us will motivate us and take us to that long path of way. And the fifth thing Jesus tells us is to take an extra mile. Judas ended his life by hanging himself. Peter did not follow that model. He has seen Jesus forgiving people, the women caught in adultery, sin no more, go in peace. And he was confident of this God's mercy and his love. Peter came back and asked for Lord's pardon and mercy. If those of you have seen this passion of Christ, you can see Peter coming to Mother Mary and crying that I have denied my master. And Mary says, Mother Mary says, he will forgive you. He forgives you. He loves you. He loved more than anybody else. And he is there to forgive you. And that is the extra mile that we are called to take, like Peter, to come back to the Lord, to repent and to ask for forgiveness. And the last, to have God as our friend, to, uh, to depend on God's accompaniment, to have faith and trust in God's accompaniment. Jesus always believed in prayer. He went to the mountain, had mountain experience, and he comes down to the multitude experience, to have people experience. He had father experience, Abba experience. He gained strength and energy from his father through prayer, through solitude. And he comes and actualizes that energy to work for the people, to be with the people. And today, my dear friends, we need to deeply believe it is that prayer, it is in that solitude, it is in presence of God, in His company, we can carry the cross and we can accomplish the challenges and the struggles that we face in life. Let us in today's your Eucharist constantly pray that through this glorious event that we may walk with Jesus. There was a conversation between Joseph of Arimathea the secret disciple and the Pontius Pilate. He goes to Pontius Pilate asking for permission to take Jesus from the cross. So the Pilate asks Jesus, oh, sorry, to Joseph of Arimathea. Joseph, I don't understand that how you are able to give the tomb that you have dug for you and for your family. You have spent so much of money and dug this tomb for you and for your family. How come you are going to allow to bury Jesus? And Joseph of Arimathea, he says, Don't worry, it is just for the weekends. And that is the celebration that we are going to have. The hope that Jesus rose and we also, undergoing this struggles of life, challenges of life, will rise with him and to the glory. 
Let us continue to pray for His grace through this celebration. Amen.